Hi, and welcome back to LearnVisualFoxPro.com. In this lesson, we're going to take a look. Actually, this is part two of a lesson we started a few days ago um, titled Creating a Form from Scratch. We looked at uh, the first segment um, of using the form wizard, and then we went ahead and um, we created a, a blank form. We added some controls to it. We added some buttons. Um, we saw a bit of code behind on the form, and but the form basically was working in the default buffer mode, which is none. Uh, we want to take a look today at data buffering or table buffering. Um, and let me go ahead and just execute this command here, do form, to bring up the form that we created in our last lesson. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Um, we saw that when we edit, if I make errors there and then cancel, um, of course, uh, the changes were still saved to the table because we were writing to the table directly. No buffering was taking place. And, of course, I, I, I did put in there a message to say that buffering was not canceled. Sorry, unable to undo as table buffering is not turned on. So what we're going to do is see how easy it is to implement buffering on our form and actually we're going to look at um, the various ways in which we can we can do that. Alright, so let's exit the form and we want to go to the form designer so we'll modify form and my form to okay Now, we've already set the data session to private. It doesn't really matter for this exercise. Um, I will speak a bit more on private data sessions um, in some later lesson. Okay, so what we want to do is to turn on buffering. And the easiest way to do that is from the form. There is, on the data tab, um, an option, a property that we can set called the buffer mode property. It has uh, three values, zero, uh, one for pessimistic, two for optimistic. And um, I will be talking more about pessimistic and optimistic um, buffering, again, perhaps in a later session, in depth, that is. Um, but uh, just for now, um, no, no buffering you've already seen. Our form is currently in a no buffering mode. Pessimistic buffering is where, uh, once you begin to edit a record, Visual Fox Pro will lock the record implicitly. And if someone else tries to edit the same record whilst you are editing the record, they will get a, a record lock error message. Um, with optimistic buffering, and it's probably the, the, uh, the, more, pref it's the more preferred uh, method of buffering, uh, Visual Fox Pro will not implicitly lock your record and thus multiple users can seemingly edit the same record at the same time. However, the lock is placed um, at the point uh, where you actually click the save button and uh, an attempt is made to save the record or to flush the buffer to disk. Uh, so to speak. And that's when the locking is done. And if there are any conflicts, then Visual Fox Pro will, um, depending on how you call the table update function, of course, will uh, give appropriate or return appropriate values so you can take the appropriate steps as to what to do. So if two persons made changes, I made a change to James Bond's um, um, address or his name, and someone else uh, made a change to his name or address, and then we both save at the same time, then we can take steps to say, well, you know, the record was changed prior to you making a change. What was the original value? What is the current value? And, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep your change? Do you want to keep the other user's changes? Or do you want to abandon all the changes altogether? Okay, so I will not be getting into that today. So let's... Uh, to turn on buffer mode, we simply, we can do it from the form, so there's form level buffering, and we'll just turn this uh, to one or two, it doesn't really matter right now, because um, it's a single, it's in single user mode. So I'll, I'll put it to two, um, and that's it. 
buffering is turned on. However, now I will need to make some modification to our code. So we'll go to the new button. And when buffering is turned on, to actually save the record, I'll need to call the a function called table update. And this takes a few parameters. Um, there's an option there for all. Uh, I can actually specify what row that I'd like to update and whether to force a save. And um, <coughs> uh, something I forgot to mention with respect to buffering, and uh, I will come back to it when we look at the third option of buffering, which is to implement it yourself in code. Actually, call the appropriate function to turn on buffering on a specific table. Uh, there are essentially two types or two modes of buffering. Um, we can do uh, row buffering, where we buffer one row at a time within a table, or we can buffer the entire table. Um, so, and I, 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 I want to correct that when I say there are two modes, because then with, with the row and table buffering, of course, then you have pessimistic and optimistic. So we end up with uh, four categories of buffering. So we have row buffering, pessimistic row buffering, and optimistic row buffering, and then we have um, pessimistic um, or optimistic uh, row buffering and optimistic table buffering, and then of course there is no buffering, so there are five modes uh, essentially. So for this one, um, we'll accept the default. In fact, I will yeah, I will, I will not pass any arguments. So I'll just leave leave it there. So we call the table update function, then we give the message that we're done. So let's go to the other button, which is the edit cancel button. And in here, we would like to um, undo the changes. So we'll call the table revert function. Again, this takes arguments as it relates to row or um, table. So if I don't pass an argument such as dot t dot for true, which would symbolize all rows, um, it works on the current row only, which is what we want because I'm, uh, we're only working with, actually here it's not specified. And uh, that's a good point I, I'll, uh, as to what buffering mode is turned on by default when we go into the form mode. And uh, that is something I will, I will uh, I'll get back to you on. So we're going to leave that as table revert. I spell that right, okay, and uh, nothing in the in the in the brackets, and so the modification. So now I need to take this message out because it's no longer true. We do have buffering turned on. I'll put a comment here. Undo most recent changes. Now remember that this is a one level undo, so only the current changes will be reverted. So let's go ahead and run this from the design window, control E, or we can just press uh, from the toolbar, the uh, exclamation um, button there. And so here again, we have our form and the standard functionality remains. And we want to edit Mary. We're going to hyphenate her name, Mary Jo. And I wish to, we could change her address. Oops, I made a mistake. So, of course, I need not worry because buffering is turned on. I can simply cancel. And uh, my original data gets uh, reset, or the old data gets reset to the original data. And that is uh, table buffering. So, at just a click of a switch or setting a switch, setting a property to true or false, buffering can be enabled. And you see where we use. Um, few codes to table revert to undo the changes. Now let's let's run that again so you can see the table update function um, in action. Okay, let's run the form from here. Do form, form two, and uh, let's find somebody to update. Let's edit Mary Jo and save. Record was save, and our changes are committed to disk. Um, once the table update command succeeds. Okay, so that's table buffering from the form level. 
Um, we can also implement it from the uh, data environment level. So I'm going to turn this one off. So we'll reset to default, which is none. We'll right mouse click, go to data environment. And here we open this table in the data environment, environment, which is my table one. And if you go over to the properties window, you'll see that is the cursor. And uh, uh, below that, sorry, here you can see there's a buffer mode override. Now, by default, it says the option is 1, which is use form setting. So if the form is 0, which means no buffering, then no buffering takes place. Of course, this overrides allows us to override whatever the form setting is. And so we're going to try to do that. And here now we can see all the other options that I mentioned earlier. <coughs> um, pessimistic row buffering, optimistic, and of course, pessimistic table buffering. And, pe and optimistic um, table buffering. And table means just multiple rows. <coughs> so if you want to buffer multiple rows um, as opposed to one row, you use a table buffering. And uh, we'll take, we're going to go with uh, pessimistic row buffering. Again, it doesn't matter because we're, we're using, this is a single instance of the application running. So we turn that on and note that in the form, buffer mode is still none. But from the data environment, we over we have the override option turned on to pessimistic row buffering, and so we should uh, get the same results. So let's run this again, and I'll go back to Mary. I'll edit. I'll attempt to edit her name, and then I'll cancel. And of course, we can tell because we are seeing the original data, the originally saved data being uh, reset so we know that buffering is turned on and uh, that's pretty cool okay so let's quickly wrap this up there's one more way to do this which is the way I normally do it um, let's reset this I tend to be uh, a hands-on guy and, and do most of my settings in code uh, it serves for me as a as a reminder um, it's more like comments so that when I look at the code I don't have to wonder what settings you know is the setting on is the setting off uh, I can look at the code and I can tell yeah I've turned this on or I turn or this is not on and that's um, that's just basically how I see it uh, you don't have to see it that way of course okay so what we what we're going to do I'm going to get rid of the data environment all together and just look at doing everything from code, opening the table myself, turning row buffering on, and um, going from there. So from here, from the data environment, I will remove the table and close that. And so if I try to run this, I should get an error. Okay, so can I find the table? That's expected. Let's see. Let's get out of this quickly. All right. Exit. And what we want to do, the, f the form again have or have yeah, have many events, and the first of which to fire, or I did mention this in the other lesson, is the load event. And here I have some environment settings. Uh, this one is not so necessary. It's there out of habit from the old days of setting echo off. Um, so what we want to do here is to now open open the table. And open the table, you should know by now, is the use command. And I simply type the name of the table. Of course, it's assumed that the table is in the path. If not, I could specify the path here. And so the table is open. And now I want to turn on, turn row buffering on. To do that, we use the cursor set property. And it's abbreviated to set prop function. First, set prop, and um, I'm so happy for IntelliSense because usually I'd have to remember all of this stuff here. And so you see, when I highlight buffering, I get all the options there. One is the one is the default, which is row buffering, table turn, um, row and table buffering turned off. Uh, two, pessimistic row buffering. Three, optimistic row buffering. And I'm going to go with three. So I'll select comma here. And then I'll type the number 3. 
And uh, given that uh, I just opened the table, it will be the selected alias. I could, if I wish to, if if um, if I uh, if I had uh, another table open somewhere else and I wanted to turn buffering on, if it was not the in the current work area, I could always specify the um, the work area in the cursor set prop. So I can use this um, irregardless of which table happens to be open at the time. If I have say a my table two open somewhere else and I want to turn buffering on that as well. I don't need to select the table first before turning buffering on. I can do all that in one shot by calling the uh, cursor set property and specifying the alias. So this is a bit redundant here, so I'll take it out. Although it's good for documentation purposes, but it's not really good. So 3 is equal to, and I never remember this, uh, optimistic row buffering. Okay, so and that's it. Use table 1, person said prop, buffering is turned on, and what I'll do is in the form, and we're going to look for the onload uh, method, which fires when the form is being closed. So when we onload, I will say if used uh, my table 1, so if it's still open, then close it. Use in my table one and you're seeing this variant of the use command for the first time so uh, regardless of where table what work area or where table one is open so if it's in work area one or work area ten um, it doesn't matter this will ensure that it gets closed if it's used at all anywhere then use in wherever it's uh, selected okay so we close that and um, Close the form here. No other changes are necessary. I can go right ahead now, run the form, and we get an error. Okay. And this is an important thing. And this is what happens when we when we uh, use the, the the options or the properties from the either the data environment or the forms um, or from the form designer is that it, it does things for us that we're not aware of. Now this is a key thing. Set multi locks must be set on. Set multi locks allows us to lock um, multiple records in a table, and because when you set the when you use the cursor set property, it never knows if you're going to use row buffering for a single table or you're going to use table buffering for multiple rows, and so um, we need to ensure, or it needs to ensure, that the set multi locks is turned on so uh, Visual Fossil can lock multiple records if needs be, depending on if you're doing um, pessimistic locking or optimistic locking. So I'm going to cancel this. We'll go back to the form designer and uh, we'll put that command just prior to calling here. We'll put it up here with the rest of these guys. So we'll set multi-lock on. By default, if it's off, you can only lock a single record at a time. Okay, so let's close here, close here. And we'll do form my form two. Okay, so let's uh, let's test this. Let's remove Joe, cancel, and there we still have the same behavior as before. Of course, table update will work as well if I go save. So that's table buffering. Um, pretty nifty. Again, we have the options from the form designer. Uh, from the data environment, or if you prefer to get your hands dirty, you can implement it all in your own code.